thank you for joining us, Waltz. Yeah, it looks like the chat really loved that uh, they, little preview there. They are very happy with it. You And that was a jam and track. Very well done, sir. So I guess we'll dive right back into questions. Um, how many instruments can you play in total? Uh, <laughs> um, I can play... Like the, the way I, I make music is, is like I don't have any prestige in needing to be able to play the entire track live in front of an audience. If I can play the guitar riff once, or even you know, <laughs> uh, part of the r guitar riff, and then piece it together somehow, or correct whatever I make, you know, the mistakes I make in the uh, in the program, I I just go for it because I the product is is you know the um, the end result is is the most important thing, you know. It, it's a, it's a mean, means to an end, so to speak. So I don't put any, um, you know, prestige in, in being able to play all these riffs, or the bass lines, or you know, um, guitar parts, or you know, these these things. So um, I cheat a lot when I'm when I when I um, make uh, music, because um, uh, I'm not expecting to be, be put on the spot and asked to play these these tracks live anyway uh and if if um there's some somewhere or some some part of the track that's uh requires like um some someone who's even better at playing the guitar better at singing or better at you know whatever is needed then uh, uh i get some budget and i hire someone to to do that for me um so I can play the, the piano, I can play the guitar, I can play the bass, I can sing, uh, I can play the uh, like harmonica. Um, uh, I'm playing um, some <laughs> really weird instruments for an upcoming track that I can't talk about because it's going to give away what the what it what it's for. But you know, I'm I'm playing some some weird stuff there. Uh, or sampling myself playing that stuff and then kind of piecing it together into a track. Um, but yeah, I'd say my main instruments are gu guitar and singing, and then I can play the keys as well and the bass. Uh, and then they're like, you can watch a YouTube <laughs> uh, tutorial and, and teach yourself how to play the, uh, you know, uh, harmonica fairly good in, in, in an hour and do and uh, good enough you know to produce a track with the harmonica in it so um, and, and it's the same for a lot of other instruments where you can you just have to have one and, and just try it out and it's it's not really it's not that hard but I wouldn't you know go up on a stage <laughs> like uh, you know uh, shred a guitar solo for anyone because I'm not that good at is really right because like I can't play any instruments the closest I've come is I can play maybe one set of a few notes on piano and that's it um Brando uh practice, Mike. practice makes perfect indeed it does the user Crazy Mike Comics asks: Some players like to have their own choice of music and payday, but currently the only way for them to have that is create a mod that replaces one of your tracks and follows the assault slash calm structure. Will there be an option for custom tracks in the future? You mean like putting whatever MP3 is on your hard drive into the game? Yeah, like I'm. Like, I guess he's asking, like, um, is there any way that they'll be able to add, like, their own custom music into the game without having to mod it in? Without having to restructure it so it follows the assault, calm, assault, calm structure. No, there's no, pl no plan for that at the moment, no. For those people, I, I guess the best solution would be to just have an MP3 play playing in the background, and then you alt-tab out whatever you're in, in the game, and you play whatever 
know, if you want Sandstorm by Darude, you uh, <laughs> you just put it in there and play it. Uh, on, on loop until until the tr uh, until the uh, heist is over and then you go alt tab out and to the MP3 player and play something else that that's suitable for the menu. I don't know, but no, there's no plan for for an update there that makes it possible for people to put in whatever. We're we're gonna put in all the music that I make into the game. Eventually, everything is gonna end up in there. So there, I mean, there's there's gonna be options. But if you want the root. Uh, then, um, sorry. <laughs> All right. So earlier you were talking about how Wolf and Houston have not been in the studio as part of your whole voice project. Can you tell us which actors you have seen come in and throw down some new lines? Mm. Sorry. I'm trying to, it's way past my uh, dinner time. I'm trying to eat uh, a fajita here. <clears throat> Very good uh, choice. Excuse me. Um, we've had chains. We've had, um, or should I say the, the voice actor's name, maybe. Damien um, Poitier for, um, for chains. We've had uh, John Fouquet for John Wick. We've had... Um, <clears throat> I wonder if we had Aoife Duffin, Aoife Duffin for, um, for Clover. I think we recorded her as well. Yeah, we did. Um, we recorded Rona Cameron for, um, for Bonnie. Uh, and also um, uh, Gago. Or um, that's what, what what he likes to be called as his nickname, but his real name is uh, Dragomir Mrzic for um, for um, Dragon. He's one of the few that we record in Stockholm because he's actually a Swedish guy who does the voice for Dragon. Um, so all of those have been recorded. Has Dallas been in there as well? Because I know his voice actor Simon Kerr tweeted a bit that he was doing some. Yeah, yeah, Simon recently. Kerr has been recorded as well. Yeah, Simon Kerr, and also, it's there's so many. Like I, I, I even forget some of the main characters, but it's Simon it's hard Kerr to get... for Dallas and uh, uh, Pete Gold for for Hoxton. They've all been recorded. Very nice. Okay, uh, regular player asks, have you ever considered the possibility or have done in the past music in a retro style 8-bit or 16-bit? Wow, that's that's like how I was, how I was, uh, you know, that's the music I did for, for uh, Vinyl Commander Rearm was retro. So definitely, like, that's my favorite style of music. <laughs> Maybe not. Like I have made like one track that's authentically, it's very authentic eight uh, bit style, where it's only it sounds like it's played on an NES. Um, but um, I guess the person is asking is ask, asking whether I'm I'm making music with like these um, primitive type of synthesizer sounds and. You know the charming retro um, type of melodies or and stuff like that, and, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'd say the music that you can find on my YouTube channel and that I put up on my website, uh, like um, <clears throat> "Hold On Tight" and uh, "Guru Four by Four um, and those tracks, they're definitely like retro style tracks. Uh, uh, the synthesizers and the melodies are very retro, but they're produced with more modern drum drum sounds. So, um, yes, I'm a little bit surprised even to get that question because uh, to me that's how I was known, you know, when 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 I that's how I busted into the scene pretty much with the retro style stuff. But maybe um, I'll, I'll search on YouTube because everything. <laughs> All my old sins are on YouTube. Someone, someone put every something up, you know. Um, there's a track called "What's the Name of It." Uh, Papagayan 
Anthem. Anthem. Papa Papagayan. That's P A P A G A A Y A N. And uh, then there's this eight bit version of that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So this is a good one. I'll I'll send you the link in the uh, Skype chat. <clears throat> That's uh, entirely done with with uh, like in a modern uh, program, but with a synthesizer that that uses uh, you know these NES type sounds. So I've written all the melodies and the harmonies and the program the drums and everything, and I adhered to the uh, <laughs> the rules of uh, uh, NES where there's only really uh, uh, a noise um, synthesizer to create drum sounds and then I think three other synthesizers there's like one square wave synthesizer and two saw wave synthesizers and that's all you can do like there's there's practically only four channels of sound that you can pl that can play at any given point in the track so it's very primitive um, and it was for uh, Bionic Commander Rearm 2 Right. So part of the voice update, and of course feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, is to add more like context-specific actions to, or voice lines I should say, to newer heists as well as the older ones, right? There's gonna be, I mean the robbers are gonna, gonna there's gonna be more banter between the different, uh, the robbers. And they're going to talk a lot more, and they're going to comment on stuff like. Uh, I think now they're only saying like, I, I, if you throw a bag into the van, they say like one, 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 and we yeah. want them to count, so we record it like one, two, three, and they can say like, oh, we, we only have three left, uh, two, two to go, and one left, oh, just one more, and they get more excited, and then when we, when you reach the um, the number of, of. Um, uh, bags or whatever it's, it's, it is you're supposed to carry or, or, or you know, get to the drop point, then they start cheering or they start, you know, talking about what they're going to do with the money and stuff like that. That's very cool. So cause... That's, that's the stuff we can we, we, I mean, it's a little bit unrealistic to expect us to have um, level specific dialogues for all the robbers. Right. We have so many robbers and so many levels because it's, imagine it's going to be the amount of levels multiplied by the amount of characters so uh, and going forward everyone will start expecting you know the levels to have these dialogues in there as well and for every character from now on that we're going to really release we need to go back and we're going to have to record even more stuff so that that character also has something to say in all the already existing levels uh, and it's just not realistic it, it was possible in the first game because we only had the four robbers, we we never added any more than the, the four that were there, and we only had a, I think the game was released with like six heists, and we uh, for the PC version we re released three more, so in total it was nine heists, and that was all there was in the first game. So it's not realistic to expect the same amount of uh, like heist specific uh, dialogues in the uh, uh, second game, but we're definitely going to make the characters talk a lot more, comment on what's happening, uh, and uh, you know, s you throw a bag up on your shoulder and start carrying it, and it's gold, and you walk slowly, and the character you hear the character, fuck, this is heavy, you know, but um, it's it's payday, like we've got to get it to the to the drop point or something like that. So they're going to comment, they're going to talk a lot more. And the character, like the personalities, are going to come across a lot more. Do you think some um, of the older heists will be touched upon as well? Because I yes, know there's... We'll, we'll go through all the existing heists and make sure that they talk a lot more in those heists as well. Because we need to manually go in there and say, at this point when this happens, uh, you know, whoever is on the server, like if, if it's Bonnie, then Bonnie says this. Uh, or if it's Wick, John Wick, then Wick says this. It's 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 quite a lot of work, not just recording it, but editing uh, it, putting it in the game so that it's available to the level designers, and then the level designers can start putting it, you know, the logics in there. If you step into this box, or if you if you're on this 
part of the level at this point or if the uh, assault wave hits when you're standing here or if the alarm hasn't gone you know if you haven't triggered the alarm where you walk onto this part then they talk then they say this it's it's super time consuming and quite complicated uh so um uh, i hope people i i know that people will appreciate it but i just want to say that even you know even there, there's a reason why it's, it's been hard for, for the second game, because the uh, ambition in terms of characters and uh, uh, primarily in terms of how many, the, the amount of uh, different heists in the second game makes this part of the game development a lot harder. Right, because you guys have an amazing amount of heists, and you're still pumping out more every month or every two months, and it's very impressive. Yeah, this year's been a very good month. I mean, very good year for these. I'm just asking about this because one of the questions we received on Twitter a lot is like, lines for using a key card only exist on two heists. Lines for dropping bags don't exist before Election Day release. So I just wanted to make sure yeah, that I'm... fans could figure out that that's on the way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like using key cards, you know, cutting through a fence, like, don't snag your suit now when you're walking through the hole of the fence, like, stuff like that. Stuff that, where we can find, um, like, lines <clears throat> for things that happen in several heists, so that there, there's a, there's some, um, what's the word? Um, there needs to be enough reason for us to record it. It can't just be for one specific heist, because it's right. going to be a waste of, of, of just recording time, you know? because we're going to have yeah. to bring like eight different re uh, voice actors into the studio just to say this line for this heist and not a, and not you know everyone is going to even hear it because they don't maybe it's their least favorite heist or something that they never play so we need to find these these things that happen in not every heist necessarily but you know enough heists cutting through fences using key cards finding key cards uh you know, getting a drill set up or, or uh, the drill malfunctioning, a lot of more comments around those common uh, events that happen in the game a lot. We're going to record a lot of stuff where the robbers comment on that stuff. That's great, because I know in the older heists, like, for example, Train Heist, there's, I think, three or four different events that happen on that heist that all trigger the same pool of just swears or whatever from the robbers, even though in later heists, each of these events has its own different lines. So I know people are excited to see how it will evolve and how, like, instead of just going, ah, damn, when snipers appear, they'll be like, heads down, snipers on the ridge, or something like that. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Brando? Uh, I know you can't say much about this question, but uh, Franz, Franz Jaeger or Jaeger asks, what can you say about Overdrill 2.0? Is there anything at all? I can't say anything about that. We figured as much. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Adds to the challenge, right? <laughs> um... So there was a rumor going around for a bit after the kind of chain and chains and John Wick trailer came out that you were one of the cops that assaulted Chance's mansion. Is there any truth to that? No. <laughs> uh, I was not on that shoot. It was recorded in Sweden, so I met uh, Damien Poitier, who, who, did, who plays Chains, uh, during his visit to Sweden, and... Uh, um, uh, that was cool, but I wasn't at the shoot uh, out in the archipelago of Stockholm. I was I was uh, most certainly busy writing music for for the movie. All right. Uh, let's see here. Fuse asks, "What is your favorite synthesizer hardware and or software?" <clears throat> wow. Um, I need to produce music in such a high, like, um, uh, tempo. Like, I need to put stuff out all the time. So I don't have a lot of time um, trying to uh, tweak sounds and create my own patches and create my own sounds. Uh, I have an idea in my head, and I just need to find something that can can 
realize that in the program, you know, as quickly as possible. So I like synthesizers that are pretty common, uh, where you can you can get patches or that has a huge you know amount of of um, presets in it, so that I can just browse through these presets and maybe find something that's that's suitable. So Massive, <clears throat> of course, is one of my favorite synthesizers from uh, Native Instruments. Um, it's a very common synthesizer, very powerful synthesizers that you can use to, to create you know pads and soft sounds as well as pretty hard and distorted uh, uh, sounds and leads as well uh, so I like that one a lot uh, I use Ableton Live uh, that's my favorite program I try, I've tried uh, Cubase I've tried um, Logic I've tried Pro Tools I've tried uh, FL Studio but my my uh, uh, program like music uh, production program of choice is uh, Ableton Live. So that's a nice little look at the kind of more technical side for everyone out there, mm -hmm. for all the aspiring musicians. <clears throat> and because more on the music topic, moving back into music, what was was there any sort of event that made you want to join the music industry? Uh, like, uh, was there any point where you just decide, I think I'm going to be a musician now? Oh, you mean like I'm already in the music industry? Because I I don't I don't see myself as being in the music industry. I'm in the game industry, and but I'm doing the music for games. The music industry to me. It's more like you know what's heard on the radio or what you know pop music and 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 that stuff. But yeah, if if <clears throat> if you're asking whether there was a point where I decided to go into uh, as a composer in the game industry, I think it wasn't so much like I I, I, descri I described early, earlier the uh, the um, my path into Grin, and that was pretty much it. I just asked. Uh, asked uh, Ulf if uh, they consider me for making you know music for their demos that they were doing. Uh, they were looking for investors to to have um, you know enough interest in their company, their newly started company, uh, to hire some people and, and get an office. You know, and I said maybe I can do the music for your demos, and, and they were like, yeah, sure, do a few demos, demo track, and maybe we like it. And they. We, Really liked it so, and then I was actually uh, going to uh, um, <clears throat> I was actually going to uh, educate myself and and uh, become like a music producer or, or a studio t technician, uh, oh. but then Grin became so popular, or you know the snowball had started to roll, and I couldn't really. Uh, it was so so much fun doing the music for for these games uh, uh, in the early days of Grin and, la and later as well, of course. But it was, it was just I got caught up in all of that, uh, and I never uh, went to school for for any because I pretty much came out of high school, you know, into Grin. Uh, I didn't do I I did like my military service here in Sweden, uh, and then pretty much that was it. Uh, so. Um, there was no plan or like a point of like, yeah, I've decided like this is my passion because it wasn't my passion at the time. I was like, yeah, yeah, I like doing electronic music and they're doing this science fiction, like futuristic like, raising game. So maybe my techno or drum and bass stuff that I do would suit their game. And, and it turned out that it did. And it was really fun working with, with games. So it, it kind of, I kind of slid into it, you know, on a banana peel. <laughs> Uh, let me find the question again. Uh, hold on, I think my thing scrolled up for some reason. Uh, John, why don't you ask another question while I try and find the question again? Do you want me to do a staff one or a community one? Go ahead, do a staff one. All right. Um, so, when you're playing with some AI-controlled robbers... If you're playing online, only the host can hear the robbers. 
and when the host is listening to the AI control teammates, they have a lot more lines than player controlled characters. Is there any specific reason for that? Well, the, the fact that um, only the host can hear the the, uh, the uh, AI controlled teammates sounds like a bug. So we have to look into that because that's not how it's supposed to be. Uh, but otherwise, like we, we I know we have some lines for the for the robbers. Like I'm helping so and so up, or um, you know I'll stay behind. You guys go on ahead. Uh, these are all lines that are specific to the uh, the um, the uh, AI because the game can know the AI's intention, whereas the pl we we can never know if a player runs up to another character and starts helping them up whether that player is actually gonna you know carry out that, that entire task. Fin like finish or, the interaction or, and then take heavy yeah, police exactly. fire, have to duck out again and try again. Well, the AI can do that too. Like they can be shot at and then they uh, they uh, stop, you know, helping you up and they try to fire at the uh, the cops and maybe turn back to you and, and start helping you up, you know, uh, again. So um, the AI can also, you know, stop the interaction, but they they will keep that. Um, uh, intention of helping you up uh, so we figured it would be kind of misleading to the other characters if we started um, started triggering those lines just when you start helping someone up that you know I'm gonna help so and so up and, and then maybe you don't do that uh, and it's gonna be misleading and it's gonna be a little bit weird it's the same when you call for the AI characters and like follow me then you can hear them say yeah or sure yeah. or yeah coming like ai well, will confirm know. it yeah, exactly uh, and if you shot at some other you know a player controlled or a character controlled by a, a, a human player they're maybe not gonna you know we we can't know if they're actually gonna follow you so they can't you can't have that you can't have that character say something uh yes or no you know uh, and then we just um, figure it's up to the players to to have like TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever, uh, and use that to communicate uh, if they want uh, to share more de detailed information, like orders and um, you know asking someone to I don't know um, just that, that that that's the reason anyway. Yeah, I see what you're saying because like I know. Us and the Rusty Chains crew, we we use Skype more than we use the game. We're more likely to just like say to our microphone, "Cloaker on me," rather than use the in-game function for spotting a cloak or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, the thing with using the fun function in the game is that the cloaker will be outlined, and the, all the other robbers or all the other players will be able to see that cloaker even through walls. Right. Yeah, and that's also very you handy. Know, focus the firepower. Yeah. And so you said that only the heist, or only the host, I should say, can hear the AI characters. That's a glitch because it's been that way since since the game released. Everyone that I've spoken to, at least, has thought that was intentional for sync issues or something. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think I've heard of that before, so I'm gonna have to look into that. Right, because as it stands. The host is the only one that can hear the AI's follow confirmation. The host is the only one that can hear them talk about getting them up. And there's only one or two heists where client players can hear the AI do their battle cry or shouts or whatever when police arrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like that. My apologies. Um, so, Brandon, you get to go for the next one, or...? Yeah, I finally found the question. Cool. Uh, Freck, Freck B. The Sloth asks, I noticed that there's unused lines for old heisters. Those are being... Hold on. I noticed there's unused lines for old heisters. Those are being put to good use in mods like Canary or Poco Rose, used up all cables, line for, lines for example. But the latest heisters, like Bonnie, don't have 
are you going to add those lines and more lines in the future or just leave them like that? Well, <clears throat> I've touched on this before. Right. I mean, we're, we're going to put some of these uh, lines to good use um, going forward. But for some of the newer characters, we've only re so far we've only recorded what needs to be recorded now to put the character into the game. Right. <clears throat> or at least we've only implemented. We've re we we might have recorded more, but we haven't taken the time to edit because it's a lot of you know hours of work to just cut up all the lines that we record and put them into the game. And we haven't done that for more lines than what's actually uh, required to release the character. So we've only, um, that's why only modders, you know, can tell the difference. They, they know that the old robbers have more lines, uh, but they only know so because they've started, you know, messing around in the game. And they've, they've heard, they can, they can trigger those, those uh, lines with, you know, some, I don't know, uh, tools or whatever coding right. tricks <clears throat> because so, um, to the common consumer or the, to the common gamer there's no difference uh, and of course uh, we're eventually going to record you know so that all the characters can say uh, all the new things that we, we want them to be able to say as I mentioned before we want them to be able to comment on you know using a key card finding a key card setting up the drill stuff that maybe isn't used by all the robbers right now, or any of the robbers. Eventually, they're all going to be they're they're all going to be able to to say that stuff. Yes, so that will be recorded. Um, um, although some of those lines were, you know, uh, recorded as early as during development before the game release, and then we realized afterwards that okay, some of these lines are not going to be put into the game. So we recorded um, and, and cut up more lines than we were actually going to use for some of these characters. But we're going to write more and we're going to pick and choose what lines work and, and we want to put in the game and we're going to write new lines for, for the, the uh, newly or the most more, more recent characters and record those lines for, for them as well. So yes and um, no. <laughs> like It's going to be it's not going to be like all everything that you can hear, everything that you can hear in Project Canary is going to be, uh, you know, recorded with with uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Bonnie. It, that that's not necessarily going to be true because uh, Project Canary has started using lines that we might have found to be obsolete. We're not going to put them into the game, uh, so they're maybe going to be taken out, or they may be, you know. We're not going to add those lines to the newer robbers, but there are other lines that are going to be uh, that are going to be recorded for the newer robbers, and we're going to write new lines even that aren't recorded even for the old robbers. So it's a little bit, you know, yes and no. Right, because I know, because I've tinkered with Project Canary a bit, and so I know there are some lines like for the first, the very first civilian that is alerted someone like even Houston who ordinarily doesn't have very many lines even Houston will be like you've got cable ties put them to use and everyone calls that flashbang so there is little stuff like that yeah and this will be the last question from Rusty Chain's staff can you talk about the progress of the Gensec enemy from Crime Fest of October last year <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. Um, it's not. I, I know probably some people think that it's uh, think that it's the um, <clears throat> uh, the turret, the SWAT van turret, but it's not. It's something else, uh, and I won't you know disclose what it is. But it's more of a. It's closer to the existing robbers, or no, no, the existing special enemies. But it's more of a character. So the, um, this uh, character is going to be speaking more than have more lines and, and more um, uh, more um, oh, 
of um I don't know <laughs> I don't know what I dare to say. It's just it's a, it's a really cool concept. Um and if I don't if I recall correct correctly, I think I was the one who hatched the idea originally for this uh for this uh type of enemy. <clears throat> um and um I know, I know people are gonna like like it a lot, uh, but I can't, I can't, no, I can't talk about uh, um, when it's gonna be released or or what it is, but it's gonna be uh, awesome. So, would it be fair to say that it's going to have personality like the bulldozer and taser, where it's spouting, and of course the cloaker, where they're spouting battle cries every few minutes. But it's also a different enough beast, kind of, that it has its own vocal cues that are more required than some other enemies. Exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, addressing the uh, the robbers. You know. Fun. I'm excited to get to try to tackle that in the future. <laughs> or shoot at the yeah. face. <laughs> or shoot at it. Yeah. Uh, Brenda? Ooh. Um, Eduardo Eve. Oh, God, that's a hard name to say. Um, I'm just gonna call him Ed. Ed asks, in your SoundCloud profile, there's a The Mark Club reinterp reinterpretation. One of the songs from the Payday, the original soundtrack. Uh, was that some, was that something you did just because you had nothing to do and was bored, or is, or is it something that you intend to do more with? <laughs> Well, it started out like something that I, I that did, did me, I did it in my spare time. So uh, I I figured uh, the mark sounded like a club track. Uh, I've done tracks since then that are even more of a club, ha, 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 have even more of a club a vibe to them. Um, but yeah, I did that one, and then I figured I've, I've thought about it since then, and I figured maybe I should release some kind of an a little collection of, uh, you know, a selection of tracks from the Payday soundtrack. We interpret it as um, more of the club music, and maybe put them into the uh, the the uh, tasteful club. Uh, when you play the game, you can hear them on the the DJ playing those tracks, like uh, um, club versions of in-game music. Uh, so yeah, it started off like something just I did that I, because I was bored or because I thought it was a, would be a fun like spare time thing to try out. <laughs> and um, I've actually started. Um, nothing is available on SoundCloud, obviously, but I've started actually working on a few other tracks and then uh, doing club style reinterpretations of, of those as well. Very cool. And that brings us into another question from community user Star Haruka. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name. If you were to remix another Payday the Heist track, sort of how you did with Breach 2015, which one do you think you would remix first? Oh, um, I would like to do... The one for uh, Slaughterhouse. It has a cool bass line. Uh, I'd like to, to sink my teeth into that one and try that one out. Cool. And is there one you would not choose? Is there one you would <laughs> put your hands up and say, I'm done, that one's fine as it is, I don't want to remix that one? Uh, well, it would probably have been uh, the uh, Diamond Heist one. <laughs> uh, um, I, I was pretty happy with the, with the original one, and I didn't really know how to do it differently. Um, so, but then it, we did this uh, Diamond Heist, obviously for for Petty Two, and someone suggested that maybe you should do like a reinterpretation of of the Diamond Heist track. So um, that's what I did, um, despite the fact that I th thought the original tracks really didn't need, you know, 
updating or anything. But I mean, a reinterpretation, uh, a reinterpretate, a reinterpretate. What the hell is wrong with my tongue? A uh, reinterpretation <laughs> of uh, of uh, a track can always be interesting, regardless of whether the track is, you know, the original version of the track is is. Um, uh, is uh, loved or well received or you know already you know uh, it's not like it's hasn't reached it, its full potential you know so uh, it's always fun to just play around with, with uh, a riff or <clears throat> a bass line or a beat so um, you know any uh, it would be fun to, to revisit all of those tracks uh, potentially, but um, I'm already doing so much music for 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 the second game, so we'll see. Right, and kind of another parallel to the first game. People are asking, do you think they will react directly to Bane a bit more, the robbers, and say like, "All right, Bane, you've got it," because currently there's only one heist in the entire game where they acknowledge Bane. Bane says, like, get the thermite on the train, and Dallas or Hoxton will be like, all right, I'm on it. Yeah, definitely. Like, this, as, as you, I mean, as you read it out now, you hear that it's only it's like a generic response. Right. So we're definitely gonna, gonna record different responses, like, fuck, it's not working, what's wrong, Bane? Or do we have to wait much longer? And stuff like that, you know, stuff that happens uh, often enough in the game, and then we, our level designers, can kind of construct uh, dialogues between the robbers and Bane with those lines. But uh, I have to be honest and say that I mean, you're not going to be, you shouldn't expect a lot of like, oh, that um, statue over there looks like yeah. it's made of, you know, like something very specific to the look that's only at one specific place in the game oh yeah uh, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna go there because it's gonna be so complicated to record something like that for all the locations in the game and for all the characters that we have so if there's if there's um, you know if an event happens often enough in the game then we will write dialogue you know connected to it and it'll be it'll be cool I'm excited to see how that goes. Because I love, like I said earlier, I love the conversations between Bane and the heisters in Payday the Heist, especially yeah. when, like, the plan would fail, and they'd be like, Bane, what do we do? So that yeah. was really cool. Um, Brandon, you got a question to read? Oh, yeah. Uh, user Garen asks, from where did you gain the inspiration to the Flames of Love song? Uh, um, that was our director. He said, like, I want this track uh, for this, this, this trailer to really um, contrast with the visuals. So I want it, like, it's, it's kind of ominous, you know, the camera panning over these burning things like the baseball and then it starts off with some burning you know barbecue stuff and then different other stuff is burning and you can even see the, the wheels of like a, a grill and it's melted so you you see that even you know the the uh, yeah these different props are burning and something went wrong uh, and you see these swats lying down and they got you know um, I don't know what it is, maybe second degree, you know, third degree burns on their skin and stuff like that. So he wanted the music to really contrast with that and be really upbeat and happy. And um, uh, his idea was to have something from the 50s. So he played a couple of tracks that he liked to me. And uh, I listened to them and we, we created like this collaborative uh, um, Spotify list of 50s tracks. Uh, we discussed back and forth and what track should be the model for 
for the uh, what track had the right atmosphere that I should try to go for. So I made something that wasn't a sound alike. It wasn't so much a sound alike of that track, but it was definitely inspired by it. And um, that's what I took also to the musicians and the technicians who helped me in the studio, uh, setting up all the effects and the old school like uh, spring reverb effects and stuff like that. I think it wasn't a sp spring reverb. I think it was a plate reverb. And anyway, this is technicalities. Um, uh, it was. Um, helpful to have something like that and the track was carol by neil sedaka there's there's this old uh, 50s uh, pop icon called neil sedaka i think he's still alive today i don't know but uh and he made this um track called called carol uh, and it has a similar chord progression and it has a similar rhythm and pretty much exactly the same tempo so i based i yeah it uh, my track has pretty much these similarities to the original track so that's the um, that's the inspiration very cool and i think there was another question related to flames of love ah yes here it is in the behind the scenes video for the track that you guys did yeah. There's kind of a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine yeah. that's in the background. Do you guys yeah. use that relatively often, or is that something that was brought in just for the track? That was just for... for. Um, I mean, that's not brought in. We went to a studio because they had that. So that was not a piece of equipment that we brought to our office. Uh, I went to a studio, and all the musicians came there, and we set set them up you know to record in that studio it's it's the same studio used by abba back in the 70s it's it's a quite a famous um, uh, studio and it has a great uh, pretty big recording uh, live room where you can you can set up you know drums and, and a whole choir or a whole like band of, uh, playing together which is uh, also a reason why it was so suitable it's, so they had this real two track tape um, um, recording equipment um, and uh, we used it because we wanted to have that authentic 50s um, character to the um, to the recording so there are some mistakes in the in the uh, in the track it's not perfect like most of the music that you hear on the radio today where, where everything is like you know the vo vocals are auto-tuned and the drums are programmed and if there's a guitar in there, it's most certainly, you know, sampled and looped and, and well, similar to, to the payday music, really. But uh, for that track, we used really talented musicians who played the track from beginning to end all together. The drums and the piano and the bass and the guitar and the uh, singers. So um, that was a different experience. Uh, back in the 50s, you, you, didn't, you didn't produce a track. Uh, in the same way you do today, you 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 captured a performance, uh, and uh, you um, so you got these live like this energy in the music that that's not present in the music today because now you have more of a more of a <clears throat> what would be the word um, more of a um, surge approach to music and you can you can every little detail you can move this drum sound a little bit you know to make it tighter and you can EQ or you can you know bass boost this part or, or comp compress and, and use uh, reverb effects on different you know you can do all these things uh, and have full control over every little detail in the track uh, back in the 50s you couldn't so we wanted to do the same thing so that's why we recorded everything live onto the two-track tape. Okay. Album maybe isn't so interesting. Uh, I can mention that uh, all the drums for um, two of, um, if, if there are any um, um, Rammstein fans out there, they recorded their, their drums in that studio <clears throat> for two other albums.
lot of cool music trivia going on. Yes. This is a really cool question. Lost Connection to Host asks, If you were given 100% free reign to write your own song, give it to the level designers, and they would build a heist specifically to fit the song, is there anything you would do differently? Uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's hard to put on the spot and, and, and answer that, you know, right now. But definitely, I can say, I, I would do something differently. I can really come up with something now, but if, if, if those were the possibilities, like I had the possibility to, to reinvent how we utilize the music in the game, for a heist, then of course, if, if, if there was time to do that, we would probably do it, you know, for every heist, because it would most certainly um, improve the experience or make it, you know, more interesting for the player. Uh, but yeah, if I could do that even once, I'm sure I could come up with something. I can't do that right now on the spot, though. But yes, that's a, that's a cool, that's a cool uh, hypothetical question. Uh, Brandon, you got one ready? We seem to have lost Brandon. All right. Oh, wait, sorry, uh, sorry. Okay. The thing was disconnected for some reason. I'm trying to find the question again. Uh, okay, there it is. Okay, uh, Wheatley Licious of Soplin asks, would you be interested in a crossover with Kelly Bailey the composer of Half-Life 2. Kelly Bailey. Kelly. Uh, Kelly Bailey. John, can you pronounce that better? Because uh, no, really. Kelly Bailey. Yeah, I'm, I'm googling him now. I, I actually, it's I don't know if it's um, you know embarrassing or if that fact should be embarrassing at all. But I don't listen to a lot of music from other games. Uh, um, I don't listen to soundtracks. I, of course, when I play games, I never t turn off the music because I'm interested in that aspect since I'm, you know, in that field myself. But uh, um, I don't play that many games, really. Uh, I'm more into, like, when I come home, I've been working on games all day. I would rather watch a TV show or, like, a TV series like Breaking Bad or something like that or uh, watch a movie. Uh, I don't play too many games, so I, I don't have a good grasp on other composers, uh, their names, their styles, their, you know. Um, there's some some, tra some composers stick out, of course, uh, like, or some, some, some soundtracks st uh, stick out to me. Like uh, I mentioned, the Mass Effect, Especially the first one, I think, uh, was really bold. I liked the the uh, the uh, idea behind that one. And, but I've never heard Kelly Bailey's name. Uh, but if he wasn't involved in Half Life Two, which is a game that I played, you know, all the way through, it was a couple of years ago. But uh, I've done that. Then he has to be pretty, pretty rad. So yeah, I suppose that would be cool. So this is something that's a very kind of unique thing in terms of payday and maybe for some game characters in general. Let's talk a bit about how Jacket was handled. So yeah. he's got, because he's the only character in Hotline Miami that never speaks in either game, he speaks entirely through tape recorders in Hotline 2. And we've got some people asking, do you think you guys would ever expand on the amount of voices or languages that Jacket runs through when he pulls up that tape recorder. Yeah, that's already in the, in the works. As Very I mentioned, cool. we, need, we need to expand on all the robbers because we want them to, to, to talk more. <clears throat> and in the process of recording more for Jacket, we're, we're 
thinking of bringing it in uh, Japanese and have some Japanese uh, like language learning tape bits in there. But that needless to say, it's more it's more expensive to hire more voice actors. Right. And as soon as it's like a specialty type of language, like if it's a, it's a weird one, then going through the same channels that we're using now to find American voice actors, it's um, it's harder and probably a, a little bit more expensive even to find good ones. Um, and of course, also very difficult to know whether someone is good at that language if you don't speak it yourself. So uh, it was a bit tricky finding, you know, Italian, and we had German and Spanish for for Jacket. We're thinking about adding Swedish because that's a low-hanging fruit for us being Swedes ourselves. So maybe we'll have some Swedish words in, in there as well. We'll see. On the topic of people speaking Swedish in Payday, do you think Wolf will slip more into Swedish often? Because Dragon is... He's got so many Croatian lines, and it's great to hear him swap back and forth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's going to talk a lot more Swedish. We've, we've already brought Wolf back into the studio to record more lines, but they haven't been put into to the game yet, and, and we're going to write specific, like... Especially when he gets angry, then he snaps back to his, you know, um, his um, his kind of Swedish language. roots and stuff. Exactly. Very cool. So yes, the answer is yes. Uh, Cork Bent would like to know: Are the phone calls to the Go Bank the results of the prank call competition? Uh, I don't remember the results of that ever being made public. Yes. That was All the of them are. There you go. Um, for the Flames of Long... Flames of Long... Flames of Love, that's going to be on the B-Sides album, correct? Because some people are wondering whether or not that will eventually be fleshed out a bit and added to the main menu of the game as a selectable track. Yeah, it's going to be it's not going to be on the B-Sides album. Is that going to be straight in the main soundtrack then? <clears throat> yeah, in like a subfolder for the singles. Everything that's released for free on Bandcamp like a single uh, that we do that for for every track that has vocals that feels like a single that feels like something people would enjoy to listen to very much you know outside of the game so we did that for uh, this is our time the soul track that that was in the beginning of uh, Huxley's breakout short film uh, we did that for both Pat Briscoe tracks and you know so all of those get get a single quote unquote single release with with the that track and it has a proper like a cover art done for it and, and everything and the flames of love had that as well so it's it's a free download on, on bandcamp um just go to overkill soundtracks overkill soundtracks dot bandcamp dot com to root to download the track in in mp3 or flac or i think there's a bunch of different you know uh, file um, types that you can download it in, and we'll link that <laughs> to your liking. We'll yeah. just quickly link that in the chat for all the fans to go take a look if they want to. Yeah, so there you have all the the tracks. Uh, most of them, most of the tracks there are are free downloads. It's only I think the Christmas album uh, and the both both of the payday. Soundtracks, payday, the highest and payday two soundtracks that actually is paid content. There, you can just download everything. Uh, but um, for um, for the PC fans who who want to use, who, who just want the music on their Steam uh, folder, in their Steam folder, we're gonna add that track there as well. Yes, okay, and it's gonna cool. be put into the game so that you can choose to have it as a as a menu track. But it's not gonna be fleshed out. It's already almost too long to be a 50s track because back then every track was like two minutes long and now with, uh, with the solo that we added in there and the second uh, chorus that's not heard in the um, in the 
trailer, it's already a full, full you know, it's a full length single, you know. So it's not going to be any longer than that. That's how it was recorded from beginning to end. Very cool. Um, uh, so, and that brings us to like the April Fools track you did, which was kind of like the Pokemon spin-off thing. I don't really know how to describe it. Yeah, that was a fun one. A lot of people are wondering if there will be a full release for that and where it will end up if there is. <clears throat> it will definitely be a full release and it will be fucking awesome, I can tell you. They gave me budget to hire um, like a metal a real like a guitarist and um, a singer to, to add some really like 80s type rock vocals to that track uh, and I've turned it into a track with, with you know two verses and choruses that are, are <laughs> so catchy and uh, a breakdown with some you know some payday related it's all payday related really the vocals um, and I wanted to do something that that uh, uh, nods to all these mid to late 80s and early 90s um, like cartoon shows like I'll see if I can find on YouTube you have the um, well um, <clears throat> Power Rangers aren't really cartoons they're, they're live action but that sort of stuff you know where the, yeah. uh, the, uh, the uh, main theme in the beginning would have these rock vocals um, you had in the 80s you had Defenders of the Earth and you have uh, Wheeled Warriors also had a very 80s style you know intro so and the track is even going to have some, some uh, monologue in the beginning with some narrator talking about like the, the scenario or the concept of Payday talking about the robbers like their heroes just like you would when you, when you some of those uh, cartoon shows always had that mono monologue in the beginning where a narrator kind of gives you the background story so that you you can you know easily catch up on what's what's what what the show is about so we're going to record that as well so uh, when you listen to the song it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a uh, a love letter to that type of uh, tv show in the shape of a of a song, for for and about Payday Two, <laughs> it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be great. I cannot wait to see that. That sounds simply amazing. So we've opened questions, live submission from the viewers right now. Mm -hmm. Will there be a Russian heister, and will there be any more heisters coming in the lifespan of Payday Two? Sorry, can't answer that. All right. If Payday 3 eventually happens, how many of the now 10 heisters will carry over? Wh wow. That's a hypothetical question. <laughs> um, I can't answer. I can't possibly even guess that right now. Certainly a few of them. Right, like... <clears throat> most certainly... The original, the original four. The original four. Uh, but I'm sure that some of the uh, additions we've made to the game have become canon enough that like people have taken them to, you know, accepted them, taken right. them to their heart. So, like um, Clover, Houston, Dragon, all have that real feeling, that atmosphere that the original crew has as well. Yeah. So um, certainly a few of them. I can't say which ones now. I don't even know if and if so when Payday 3 is going to you know, start being developed. So it's a super hypothetical question, really. Um, which track that you've made 
be it for payday or just for something else, was the most stressful for you from the production side? Sorry, uh, from the beginning? What, what? Um, which track have you made that kind of caused you the most stress from the production side? What was the most headache-inducing? I know um, <clears throat> I really shouldn't say this, but a few... I mean, sometimes... It's not shown to to uh, to the gamers and the fans, but I'm not all decisions are made, you know, six months in advance and everything's planned out and everything is you know made d done you know correctly and um, and with a lot of time, um, like you know margins like that, like that. And this is so funny that it's turned out to this big huge thing now, but. They actually for for the first um, April first uh, site with with the Pokemon Pokemon um, reference uh, music referencing music. They came to me a day before, like we're thinking of doing this thing, <laughs> and I was like, I have less than twenty four hours to make the track. So I actually worked for like from I think eleven p.m. to three in the morning or something making that track in my home studio. Um, and and people seem to like it so much, and now it's turning to this big thing. But there was, I mean, <clears throat> that's a good example of something where, you know, I managed to work something out, you know, uh, under a lot, a lot of stress um, and a, not a lot of time. Um, but it turned out pretty good, I think. I agree. It's a really, really cool track, the way it came out. And as you said, there's some really cool plans for it in the works as well. Um, this is something I'm fairly certain you can't talk about, but a lot of people are asking, can you give the release date for the Golden Grin Casino? I cannot. Yeah, I figured. <clears throat> Sorry. Um... So, we have gone a bit over time. We're 15 minutes over the time you said you budgeted, so if you want us to stop at any point, let us know. We're good let's, to... Let's go for another 15. Let's go to... To the next it's hour? A, it's, a, it's a... Yeah, it's a quarter to 8. 8 p.m. in Sweden. Let's go to 8. Okay, we won't steal any All more right. of your time. Um... Uh, here's a question. Uh, before I ask this, are you familiar with what a Counter-Strike Global Offensive music kit is? I do, yeah. Okay, then you'll understand this. Mastercore asks, would you ever make a Counter-Strike Go uh, music kit if you could, either with the music from Payday or your own written stuff? I would love to. That would be cool. Would you buy it? Of course. Yes. <laughs> Don't even have to think about that one. Yes. That would be a, that would be a pretty um, pretty cool cool thing to do definitely. And I'll I'll maybe I'll look into. It. I'm not the one to bang my own drum, you know, and and um, assume that enough people would be interested in that for to actually you know contact Valve and, and do it. But maybe I should. We'll see. I'd be interested, I'd definitely grab that if it became a thing. I'd be interested to see how that would work out. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, like, if I did it, like, if I would put some 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 really, really payday-ish stuff on there, because it feels like I'm do, if I'm doing that as a, as a you know, private thing, as it's just me, Simon, doing it for, for then it feels weird to take the type of music that's been, you know, become iconic for for Payday, and put that into some other product. Um, so, so maybe it would be it would be a little bit different, I think, from from the Payday music. Um, a lot of the chat is asking this, and again, I'm pretty sure you can't answer this. And I'm sorry, everyone's firing all these like NDA questions at you, but. 
Can you talk <laughs> at all about what the next DLC will include? Or no. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, we have to announce this stuff like properly. Right, uh, of course. And and uh, with press releases, and it has to be in, in planned out and and um, whatnot. So I can't know. I mean, we're we're a stock, you know, market uh, registered company, uh, so it has to be handled in certain ways. All these releases and use releases and stuff like that. So no, it's only kind of. Um... Going with the kind of like this actually just gave me this question right now with the whole new DLC and everything. But um, for the Alizo heist, is that being made by you or is that being made by Alizo or is it going to be collaboration? Like, what is it going to be? It's going to be a him. He's going to do the music. Hmm. I'm sure you guys have heard the track because it's on, it's already on like Spotify and on every, everywhere. So yeah, it's we've... been released. And, and we're actually have been allowed to use that music like in the game and I've been sent the stems for the track and everything so that we can implement it um, as we see fit in the uh, in the game and it's going to be like the, the music is going to be very central obviously because it's a collaboration with, with a really famous producer <laughs> so um, the music his music is going to be very central to that to that uh, heist and it's going to be cool Um, so this is talking about one of the more recent tracks that came out. There hasn't been too much talk about the track that came out just on uh, Thursday, the other day, with the animation update. There was a little track on the microsite for that. Can you tell yeah. us a bit about that, whether or not that will be released as a fleshed-out thing? No, it's not. I mean, it's going to be released as is on the uh, B sides album. Um, I can't, like, some of these tracks are, um, for the micro sites, are like, might be rejected stuff from, you know, from trailers, from other, like, live action short movies that we do. If the director do don't like them and I kind of like them, then maybe it ends up on a, on a micro site. And this is one of those occasions. So it was a track that I had intended for intended for a certain scene in um, in an upcoming uh, live action trailer or a live action short movie. But uh, we found another style or another track to be more suitable, and then I kind of put this one out on on the micro side uh, instead. I had a couple to choose from because I have, as I said before. I have this huge, uh, like, folder with with music ideas and and uh, half um, finished stuff, uh, but this one seemed to to suit that site well. So um, it's not going to be fleshed out in any way. It's just going to be as is. Very cool. Because even as it is, it stands well on its own. It's still. A nice track to go there and listen to. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you like it. Um, a lot of people are asking, will the quick little full force forward remix from the hype train site appear on the B sides album? <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Like I have nice. to. I have to find some. I don't know really. Maybe it should end up on on the we'll see it maybe it ends up on the payday 2 soundtrack because it feels like it's more of a payday 2 track than like it it feels like it's justified to put that on the on the payday 2 soundtrack but uh, it'll be released somehow and we'll put it in the game probably it's going to be like maybe I'll put it in as a random like if you have full force forward chosen as the track then it randomizes every drop every time you know beat drops uh, during the assaults you get either this version or the original. I don't know. I would love that. That sounds really cool. That sounds like a really fun thing to do. Yeah. Add more of a random element to the soundtrack. Yeah, cool. 
because I know I spent a lot of time going to the Hype Train site just for that track, to be totally honest, not so much to check the numbers <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, it'll end up in the game, so you got that to look forward to. Uh, community user Fuse asks, if you were arrested and ended up in jail, but you could only take one album with you, what album would it be and what format would it be on? <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a... <laughs> that's a tricky one. Yeah, it's a tricky one, but also, like, <laughs> is there a lot of people out there who are looking forward, who have been, you know, rattling their brains thinking about this? Uh, no, just this one guy. It's, it sounds like a really specific and odd yeah. question. It's but popped yeah, up. Yeah, uh, cool. I have to admit that I love... Um, the uh, second album from Sheryl Crow from 95 or 96 or whatever. She's done some crappy music lately. Like, I haven't bought any of her latest albums, but in the 90s, uh, she, she, there's not one bad song, in my opinion, on that second album. It's the self-titled Sheryl Crow uh, album. I love that one. That's a good one. So maybe that one. And do you, because they're also asking for the format, would that be like cassette, CD? Uh, whatever, I mean, whatever's available in the, uh, in the, in prison, I suppose. Like if there's a CD player, it has to be a CD. So I'm, it's, I'm, I'm not in love in any specific format, you know, it's not like I'm a vinyl, like I need, I love vinyl, like it has to be vinyl. It's not like that, so. Maybe for the sake of, you know, because um, it's uh, comfortable or easy to use, uh, just an MP3 player. That's pretty cool. Um, so, something that's sparking quite a lot of debate in our Twitch chat right now, actually. Can you clarify, once and for all, what's going on with Chains? Because... Since Payday 2 released, there have been different answers given with whether or not this is the same change from Payday 1, just kind of changed in story, or if this is a new person taking on the mantle of chains, as Houston was. Um, it's supposed to be the same character, but we replaced the voice actor. Alright, there you go, everyone. There's your answer, because... And I think that you know, from now on, from now on, and into eternity, Damien Poitier will do the voice for Chains. Because to me, this is how Chains, you know, how I like, how I imagined Chains would sound like, uh, even when we did Pay to the Height. Uh, we had a good voice actor back then too, uh, who had a really good, deep, cool v voice. But uh, I think Damien Poitier, uh, he brings just so much. Um, like personality to it and he improvises and ad libs all these uh, you know hilarious lines and he's really taking he, he's really taken the character and you know and run with it yeah he so to speak you can tell he definitely really likes his work with chains yeah and we like given giving him work with that like that that's why chains was the main character when in the in the trailer where we introduced uh, John Wick rather than right. anyone else because we like uh, uh, Damien Poitier so much and want to you know want to give him work you know <laughs> um, Chains has one of my favorite lines in Payday 2 when he's answering the pager saw a pigeon rats of the sky that's just yeah I love that one too fucking, fucking rats of the sky yeah, yeah. All, all the like pager that. lines think, are fantastic. Yeah. I love how much everyone shows their own personalities through those. Yeah. They're fun to, to write. I, I've written a few of them. Uh, some was actually written by... Some were written by um, uh, David Goldfarb, 
when he was still working at uh, Starbreeze. Oh, really? Uh, and now we have another guy called uh, Tid Cooney, who uh, who worked at uh, Lucas uh, Lucas Art before. Uh, and he's doing some level design stuff and writing some script, and, and uh, he's super talented, um, uh, super talented writer, and uh, he writes lines now for for uh, a lot of the 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 robbers and the uh, heists, uh, and uh, he <laughs> he comes up with some hilarious stuff. So this is one that a lot of people on the forums i know brandon here has also been asking about it a lot um it's pretty funny will there ever be the return of chances in a pickle <laughs> yeah maybe we'll have like an option in the menu you can take a box and then you can the pickle switch yeah the pickle switch <laughs> we'll have like who like whenever uh, wolf is and is down should he be in a pickle you tick on tick that box and you have a, <laughs> a box for every robber and then whenever someone's down that person will always be in a pickle please make that's, this a thing that's <laughs> that's how uh, like and then maybe the chains box is always ticked and you can't untick it oh yes of course <laughs> that, that goes without saying right yeah. No, but yeah, sh sure. I mean, it's so easy to put it back in. I just when I wrote new lines for for the for the robbers, I didn't even think. Uh, it never crossed my mind that, you know, change was the only one that had that specific uh, saying or that ex expression in one of, of them. Or um, when Bane talks about change, that that the change is the only one that gets that kind of. Uh, um, you know that expression in there, and that made every. It's only change that's in a pickle. You never hear him say like a wolf is in a pickle or Dallas is in a pickle. So I never, I had never realized really that that was a thing. But now that we we, when we took it away, people seem to to really miss it. So maybe we have to put it back in. I'm so sorry. I think you're going to get a lot of tweets. The whole chat is exploding right now with. Pickle switch Hashtag. and pickle heister confirmed. Yeah, this is. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I guess this will be our last question then, since it's just about at that time. Yeah, make it a good one. The oh, there's only one in chat right now, and it's not a really good one, but. It's the only one we've got. Will John Wick ever count past one? <laughs> oh yeah, like definitely. Uh, and I've answered this before. All the robbers will be able to count, and they will be. Uh, if you throw the bag into the, like a helicopter, then the helicopter pilot will be like, "Oh, it's getting heavy now. I have to, you know, fly out with this stuff." Or. And the dr if it's you're throwing it into the van, then the van driver is going to comment on, you know, if it's heavy. We're going to add a lot of stuff. And, of course, uh, John Wick is going to be able to count past one. Right, because I know it's, like, it's become almost a joke in the Payday community because everyone has, like, four or five lines for community, for um, throwing in all the bags, and then Wick only has the one line that plays, and it's just one at the top of his lungs. Yeah, it's especially hilarious when you're doing like shadow raid and you have like the, like twelve bags and you have this one guy just doing, pick, like securing all the bags and you're just in const you're just constantly hearing one, one, one yeah, at the top of his that. lungs when he's supposed to be sneaky. Yeah, that's another part of the of the voice update that we're adding. We're adding a lot more because now we have what we call the control voice and the assault voice and those are like the, con the control phase is, is when the alarm has been, has been triggered and the robbers no longer care about being silent and they're commanding the room you know they're taking control they're talking loud and with loud and booming voices and trying to sound you know intimidating and then in the assault then they're really you know kicking it up another notch starting really screaming and shouting and you know, wailing when they're shot down and, and they're cursing. 
a lot more and they're you know you can sense the the panic in their voices <clears throat> uh, because we know for a fact that during they're during salt the player is also a lot you know under a, a lot more stress so it's nice if the characters in the game kind of mirror or uh, give uh, um, add to that atmosphere or that uh, feeling um, but there's only a few lines that are available in stealth and more and more heists are you know it's possible to, to stealth a lot of the heists in the in, the, um, in payday 2 as opposed to payday 1 where we can only stealth I think uh, <clears throat> pretty far into into um, you can stealth um, most of hostile. the way through Diamond Heist, most of the way through No Mercy. Yeah, and those are pretty much the only ones. You can uh, go maybe two minutes first, of counterfeit. Yeah, in First World Bank, you can right. walk around. And then it's kind of scripted, like it's it's written, it's tailored for that um, for that heist. Um, and you couldn't do much. You can only pretty much you know, walk around and, and not, you know, spot guards maybe and 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 stuff like that right uh but in the in the uh, in pity 2 there's a lot more uh, that's allowed during the stealth portion of of the level uh you can drop you know ammo bags and, and stuff like that even you know before the alarm goes off and then all those lines need to be able you know they should be able to whisper those lines as well like i'm putting an ammo bag over here and you should be able to say that so uh, that's another part of the vo voice update we're doing. We're adding a lot more stealth um, versions of already existing lines. Right. I know that's a strategy. Which, which I think will be ex uh, appreciated. Yeah, that's a strategy we here at the Rusty Chains use a lot. Brandon and I prefer to be kind of the tankier players, whereas Tavia and Waltz are our designated ninjas. So we often find ourselves having them inside dealing with guards and whatnot while Brandon and I are outside getting all the ammo and weapons and whatnot prepped so when the alarm rings we can rush right in ready to go so yeah. thumbs up to the idea of having like med bag and ammo bag quieter before the alarm rings and I guess this will be our last one when Derek is eventually back in the studio for Houston. Will his stealth lines be updated? Because as it stands, his stealth lines are cut from his reaction to the police taking bags. And he's screaming at the top of his lungs for every stealth marking that he does. So is that yes. something that will be addressed in the future? Definitely, yes. All right. So... I guess that's it then, because we've gone a good, looks like more than half an hour over the time. Yeah. So, thank you so much for staying with us for was... all the extra time. It was a pleasure having that's you. Cool. Yeah, it was Thanks it was for a blast. having me. Oh, no problem. It was nice to, to, to be asked to be on the, on the stream. And uh, that people are interested enough in what I do to, to actually uh, listen to it and oh, ask yeah. questions about. It. Yeah, no problem. It was it was a blast for us. I hope you had fun as well. So we're going to have we've given away most of the DLC that you were kind enough to provide to us. All we have left is the game of the year editions, which are being raffled on our Steam group. If any of the viewers want to take a look. That's the Rusty Chain Steam community. And I believe Mentality's here with our intro. Or outro, I should say. Mentality? Alright, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to our interview. And see you all soon. Stay rusty. <laughs>